Hi everyone and welcome. Today's video is going to be about how to extract the date JSON data from inside a script tag on an HTML page. So this is the page that we're going to be using. It's uh, student accommodation uh, and I've picked London. So if we have a look you can see that the accommodation is all loaded up like this and if you go to view source you will see that there is no usable HTML data for us to actually um, scrape out using beautiful suit but what we do have is this long list here of what looks like JSON data we can see that it's got lots of the information that we're interested in so you can see that it's got the address um, the area the city postcode picture uh, links etc etc and the value so what we want to be able to do is use Python to extract this information and pass it with JSON just to get out what we want or to make our own data set so the first thing we need to do is uh, get over to our text editor and copy the URL. So I'll get this. And we're going to in need to import a few different uh, libraries. So we're going to import requests to go out and get the information. Then we're going to import JSON because we're going to need that to work with the data. And then we are going to do from PS4 import beautiful soup because we're going to use that as well to pass the um, HTML. Check that's all good. Right. So we'll set the URL. That's a nice long one. There we go. And we need to do now is R is equal to go out and get the data requests dot get the URL. So now if we do uh, print, I think it's R dot status code. We're getting a 200, which means we are connecting fine. OK, so what we want to do is we want to create our soup variable and pass that information into beautiful soup so we can extract the data from that script tag so we're going to do soup is equal to beautiful soup and then uh, r.content and we're going to specify the html parser like this as i tend to always do let's print something out so we know that we're in the right place i tend to just do the title or something like that Okay, now we know that we're in the right page. What we need to do now is just a bit of recon and we need to find out where this information is and how we're going to plan to get it out. So the first thing we need to do is if we go back to our source code, we can see here that it's inside a script tag. But there's nothing else that defines what this script tag is. There's no ID or it's not in a div or anything like that. So in these cases, the easiest way to do it is to literally count down how many script tags you are in and then use an index when we do find all with beautiful soup. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to see this is the first one. One and it's closed. Two. That's the third one. That's the fourth one. And this is the fifth one. So this is the one that has our data in. So we need to use beautiful soup to find all so on script tags, index out the, the fifth one, which will be number four, because it's a zero index, and then get the information out. So I'm going to do script is equal to uh, soup dot find all and we're going to look for the script tags and we are saying that we need four so if we now go and print out that and see what we get you can see right away that we are we are in the right place and we are getting back all of this information so that's great but the problem is is this that this here has got a lot of extra data around it which means we can't just dump that straight into json library in python and get the information that we want so what I tend to do is I like to copy all of this. So let's copy all of this out. All of it. There we go. All the way down to everything inside the script tags. And I like to put it into an online JSON formatter. Um, this is the one that I use because it will tell you what the problems are. So if we paste this in, we can see right away it's saying that it is an error and is expecting a string or blah, blah, blah. So this means that um, if we try to load this in as a JSON object into our Python script, it will just fail. So we need to change this string up a bit before we can load it in. So the first thing that I can see here is there's a lot of white space at the beginning. So that's fine. We can get rid of that nice and easily. So we can do dot strip. First of all, we're going to do dot text, sorry, just so we get the text from this. And then we're going to do dot strip. And this is going to remove, if I make this a bit bigger and come up to the top, this is going to remove uh, the text is going to remove the script tags and the dot strip will remove the leading white spaces. 
So let's do that again. Okay, so now we are just down to this, so that's good. So we go back to our formatter and we go, well, we've got the, we've got rid of the um, leading white space, but we're still not quite there yet. But what we need to do is we need to basically chop off the beginning and anything at the end of this string to make it match the JSON parser so we can get that information. So what we want to do is basically we want to count how many characters, including white space, that we want to get rid of at the front of our string. Now the JSON will always start, if you look here, it'll say it'll start with something like this, and we can see that the first thing that we match is the bracket right there. So we want to get rid of everything before this bracket. So I've just counted this out and I think it's about 55. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put our uh, index for the text in this sorry our slicer for the text and I'm going to go ahead and say remove the first 55 characters from this string you can see here 55 that means start 55 characters in so if we run this again let's see what we get okay so I'm not quite there yet I've still got a few left so let's say 55 a white bit of white space 56 57 58 so let's go for 58 and then go again that's great. So there's nothing before our leading uh, curly bracket there. So now we know we're getting that, we can get rid of all of this at the start. Now if we try and validate again, uh, we're getting an error at the end. So we can see that it should end with the curly bracket and not this um, little uh, semicolon. Well that's nice and easy, we can apply the same method and if we're taking 58 off the front, if we do minus one, that means we're going to leave one left at the end. So we're going to come in one from the end. So if we run this again, we can see now we've got this semicolon's gone and nothing at the start. So what we want to do is if we come back here and we get rid of this semicolon and validate, and sometimes this doesn't work, so we need to copy it, delete it and repaste it in. There we go. So now this is telling me that if we, now that we've cut our string down to this, we can pass this into the JSON uh, library in Python and we can then uh, extract information from it as we would do normally. So let's do that now. So what we want to do, move this down, get rid of that. We want to do, let's call it uh, JSON object is equal to, actually no, let's call it data is equal to json.load s because we're loading a string into it. And we're going to do script like this. And now if we print our data we should get exactly this back again there we go so now we basically have a JSON object loaded in and saved into our data variable we can now go ahead and manipulate as we would normally so what I'll do is we'll just come back here and we can see that it's inside our main bracket we've got properties which is where we want to be and then listings then groups which then becomes a list uh, a list and then results and then property. So we need to go all the way through this first. So if I just quickly do that, so we want to do uh, properties, then it was listings group listings groups. Does that work? Nope, can't spell. Listings groups and then zero for our zero index and then results should give all the results and then if we pick the first one that is essentially the first one here which is this and that's all the information is you could go even further and you could get just the addresses out or you could go and just get um, say the postcode and then the price you can create your own data set or you could scrape this every day and see if any new properties come up or something like that so that's how I would go about approaching this. Um, we can use beautiful soup to get the to find the script tag and we've counted how many script tags down because there was no ID. If there's an ID, you can find it that way. And we're basically just removing characters from the end and the beginning of the string to make it into a JSON format so that we can then we can then uh, manipulate it with the JSON.loads and going through that way. Um, I always find that the online parsers are really useful. Um, I'll leave a link to that one that I use um, and also I'll leave a link to a couple of the other, couple of my other videos where I explain some more of the other concepts that we've used in here that I've probably glossed over really quickly. 
So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments any questions or queries. Um, give it a like if you like the video. Consider subscribing. On my channel there's more web scraping content and there is more to come. Cheers guys. Bye.